Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about why it's the case that marginal revenue is less than price or average revenue for firms with market power. So before I get onto the explanation, I'll just define these key terms here. If you want to skip this part, uh, then that's fine. Okay, if you're still with me, let's start with market power. So when I talk about firms with market power, I'm talking about firms that are price makers rather than price takers. So they have some control about the price that they set in the market. Now, the most common type of firm with market power that you have probably been talking about a lot in class is the monopolists, right? They have some control about what price they set. Okay. Secondly, let's talk about marginal revenue. And all I mean when I'm talking about marginal revenue is the additional revenue afforded to the firm when the firm increases increases its production by some marginal amount. And lastly, when I make the identification between price and average revenue, it's just a simple mathematical identity. So I'll go through the steps with you here. Average revenue is just total revenue divided by the quantity that we're producing. But we know that total revenue is equal to P times Q price times quantity. So let's divide both sides of that second equality by Q. Those Q's cancel out and we get TR over Q is equal to P, but we know that TR over Q is equal to AR, so average revenue is equal to price. Okay, great, so let's push forward to the explanation. Now I have the picture here of a downward sloping demand curve, and the reason why I have this curve here is because it's pretty much the reason why it's the case that MR is less than P for for our firms with market power. And basically what the downward sloping demand curve means is that if a firm with market power, a price maker wants to increase their production, then they have to lower their price. So for instance, if I was initially producing four units at $6 each, if I wanted to increase my production to say five units, then I'm going to have to drop my price. That's what the downward sloping demand curve mandates. And the reason why I have to drop my price, let's say to a place like $5, is because if I kept the price at $6, there wouldn't be enough people who were willing or able to buy my whole five units. Okay, with that in mind, let's keep on with this example and find the marginal revenue associated with going from the first point of production to the second where we've increased from four to five and decreased our price from six, six to five. And let's just, so it's easy for me, let's just pretend that this is a market for pink boxes because they're easy to draw. So initially I was selling four pink boxes at $6 each. So my total revenue is P times Q, which is six times four, which is 24. If I increase my production to five boxes, I have to lower my price. So now for each of these boxes, I'm selling them at $5 each. My total revenue is P times Q, so five times five is 25. Now my marginal revenue, let's just use the formula that you've most likely been given in class. My marginal revenue in these discrete cases can be described by the change in total revenue divided by the change in Q. So that is 25 minus 24. That's the difference between my total revenues divided by one. So that all just comes to one. And that is indeed less than the price of five. So my marginal revenue is less than my price. So let's just focus on this marginal revenue is equal to one and, and see how that happened. Because I think the intuition for most students is, well, the marginal revenue is just the price, right? We sell one more and we uh, get that price back, even if we have lowered the price. And indeed, we have to take into consideration the fact that we've produced one more and we're getting, well, in this case, positive $5 more, right? But what this doesn't take into consideration is that those first four units, I had to decrease the price. I used to be able to sell them for $6 each. Now I'm selling them for $5 each. So in the context of this example, this corresponds to, well, a negative one for each of these four units. I've got four negative ones here and one positive five. If we add them all up together, we get one, which is my marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue is always going to be composed of kind of two parts for firms with market power. It's going to be the additional unit and the price we get for that unit. But then because we've had to drop the price for all the other units, there's going to be this negative component. Uh, and that's all due to that downward sloping demand curve. Okay, I hope that helped. I hope it's clear. And I hope you guys are enjoying studying economics. Please like and subscribe if the video did help. Please check out my channel, my other videos. And I hope you guys are having a really great night or day.